students with the Yoga and Oils event, we're so excited that you're all here today. We have Adabel Carson, her Instagram is Adabel B. Carson. She is a doTERRA diamond, holistic health coach, Essentials for Yoga is her Facebook, Essentials for Yoga on Facebook, uh, Aroma Touch tech trainer and a yoga teacher for 11 years. So she's gonna be teaching us about working with oils in your yoga practice as well as running us through a flow. So. We're so excited you're here, and we really hope you enjoy it. Thanks so much. Okay, I'm gonna come down here, otherwise my head is, is off, decapitated. <laughs> so, um, welcome to this yoga night. So fun, it's a little bit chilly here in Utah, and we're expecting a big storm coming in. So we're gonna kind of warm up. Um, in this yoga practice and really take care of our heart. It's the love month, so this will be a fun way that you guys can share oils in your yoga classes or possibly just play this and, and have your own little class, private class, um, and I'll just suggest some of the oils that we'll be using. So to start, um, you really can't go wrong with oils that you feel intuitively uh, drawn to for your yoga practice. So, but for tonight, because the theme, it's, it's kind of good to have a theme. So our theme tonight is a heart opener class. So don't let that make you um, turn it off. <laughs> they tend to be a little bit more, oh, they delve in and we're, our heart is very tender. So it might bring up some emotions and um, some work from within that you might not have been expecting. So allow those emotions to come, welcome them, sit with them, and um, let them work process through. So we're just gonna start with asking anyone in the class, so I'm glad that we have some people here, are there any aches and pains that you have, or possibly um, an issue that you've noticed after a yoga class that it's a little bit more tender or causes some pain. Back up here. I'm not as familiar with yoga, but I get kind of lower back. Your lower back. That's a very common, common place. So um, I have some deep blue rub, which is an anti-inflammatory, um, helps support. Um, allowing our muscles and our bones and our tissues to release some tension. So would you like to try some of that? Sure. And a little bit goes a long way. So we're just going to give you a teeny little bit. So you guys there that are at home watching, doing this practice with us, if you have some deep blue rub, go ahead and take just maybe a dime's worth and then rub it at the area of concern. So I just was recently um, injured in my lower back too. So this has been a new challenge for me. Oh, come on in. Is there someone? Hi. So wherever that might be, and if you've noticed, um, if you're if you're a yoga instructor, if you've done yoga for quite a few years especially if you do Ashtanga, sometimes the wrist um, can be a problem area and cause a lot of tenderness. So it's really helpful also to put a little bit of that deep blue here on the wrist. Okay. And the more that we move and also gain heat in our body, this will reactivate. It's an amazing feeling and also for recovery, it will feel great. All right, so another thing that we're gonna do to prep is we're gonna take some peppermint and breathe, and we're gonna place it in our palms, rub our palms together, smell it, put a little bit on our heart, and then we're gonna rub just at the top of our mat where we come down, usually when we bring our face down so we can get that big whiff of that peppermint and breathe. And as we pass this around the class, I'll tell you guys a little bit more energetically, emotionally, what these essential oils, um, the benefits are from them. So if you're at home, you have Breathe Respiratory Blend, as well as a peppermint from doTERRA, or if you don't happen to have the doTERRA brand, 
if you have any kind of um, essential oils that are more for your respiratory system, um, that will help open up the lungs, open up the airways, give you some energy. So peppermint, it's the oil of a buoyant heart. So it's a beautiful one to use, especially for a theme tonight. Yeah, go ahead and spread it um, where your face usually will come and meet. So each time I'll kind of cue you to take a big whiff of that and then love it because it brings a lot of energy in your practice. Okay, and then the breathe is a respiratory blend. So this um, corresponds with our respiratory system, which you know, is part of our heart energy. And it reminds us that when it's difficult to take in full breaths of air, a lot of constriction is happening in this area of our body. So it will just help us, remind us to fully open the lungs and fully open the heart and receive and then as we exhale allowing anything else that doesn't serve us to release or if we're feeling that buoyant heart allowing that to release outward around our space all right then the final thing that we'll do is some balance so oftentimes um, if we live a lot in our head or in our emotions we tend to feel like like this a little bit with the wind and um, our emotions can get the best of us and we seem to be acted upon more than um, creators in our life. So balance is a grounding blend and I would like to invite all of you online to get something that's grounding. This is all made of um, oils from trees. So if you have cypress or any kind of a tree oil, you can use that. And how we'll use this is put it on the bottoms of our feet. And this is what I do in my classes. I roll the bottoms. <laughs> so that's kind of fun, and you guys can roll it to each other. But we're just going to put a couple of drops on the bottoms of the feet, both sides. And then I'm going to roll that to you. <laughs> Thanks. And using your hands, we're going to just massage the bottoms of our feet. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Do you need a mat? I do. Oh. Otherwise, I can just use the floor. That's okay. Okay. I have one in my car. No, it's okay. I can use one. I can use one. All righty. Totally okay. Okay. So you all at home, if you don't have a mat, yeah, use a, um, a rug or whatever it is that you have at home. So we're going to rub our hands our uh, balance well on the bottoms of our feet, and then also get the tops of your, of your feet as well. And as you're rubbing this in, bring awareness to what your feet do for you. All the benefits that you receive from these beautiful parts of your body. And then make sure we come all the way up to the toes. And then lots of nerve endings at the top of our feet, so we create that um, attention as well. And then we'll just slowly lengthen our legs and just bring that oil also up our legs. So this all connects us closer to the earth energy. And this is what we call our root chakra. So this helps us bring balance into our mind, into our heart, and helps us to feel stable, to feel supported by the earth and bring that down so that it really truly can become um, a place where we can feel supported and grounded. All right, so now finally, if you want to just take the little bit that's in your hands, rub your palms together very vigorously. And then we're going to place this at the back of the neck and then up the base of the neck to the base of the head. And then just rubbing the base of the head. So our um, doTERRA Balance Blend has frankincense, which is a deeply healing oil, which also will help our brain, especially both sides of our brain, to balance itself out and engages both. And then finally, just creating a tent over the face and becoming present in this very moment like a tree. The tree is very stable, 
doesn't worry about tomorrow or yesterday. It's present exactly in the moment. So we'll bring our awareness to this very moment. And just listening to the breath. The rise and fall of the chest. The softness of the face the shoulders, around the eyes and mouth and nose. So now because tonight is a heart opening class, we'll go ahead and flutter those eyes open, relax the hands on the floor. Um, if you have a block at home, take that. Since we don't have blocks here in class, we're going to just roll up our mats. So just roll them up with the short side. And thankfully, we've got carpet under here. If you were on a hard cement floor, this might be a little bit tough. So if you're at home, just grab a bolster, or if you have another yoga mat, use that. Oh, this is going to be tricky. <laughs> so you're going to bring the edge of your bolster or your yoga mat right to the top of your bum or where your hips are. And some of our mats are a little bit thicker, so they might be a little bit higher. So um, we're just going to come here and then Put a soft bend into your knees like you're reclining in a chair. And then just use your hands and your elbows to slowly make your way down. And you want to make sure that your spine is supported as well as your head. So if you have a shorter bolster or shoulder, shorter mat or blanket, lift it up a little bit higher so your head is supported. And then we'll take those hands out to the sides at a cactus pose. So putting a soft bend into the elbows, the palms are up to the sky. And then just noticing what feels good with your legs. Possibly the knees are up, and then just letting the knees rock in against each other. So that's one option. You can also lengthen them, or possibly bring the soles of the feet together, the knees out to a butterfly. more as we're in this space let's bring awareness keeping the eyes closed as we bring the air in through the nose feeling the chest expand as well as the belly and then as we allow that air to release just the opposite escaping from our belly then our chest and out through the nose our mouth whatever is feeling comfortable tonight we're going to breathe in that love, breathe in that air, breathe in that energy to support the heart. And we're going to exhale, see that beautiful energy expand out surrounding our mat. Continue outward surrounding the room. And out through the room surrounding our entire building. And if it feels all right, let's go ahead and continue to contain that breath in and out of the nose. But if that ujjayi breath is not a common practice for you, go ahead and just breathe in through the nose and exhale gently out the mouth. Now let's bring awareness to the timing. Are you finding that your breath is shallow or is it deep and long? If it's still a little bit shallow, you can take those palms, rub them vigorously again, and bring that aroma back towards the face to help you take deeper, fuller breaths. And just as a reminder, because we did have some of those that came just a little bit later, this is a heart uh, opening class, so if you find some emotions coming up or 
Some things loosening up, chipping away, totally normal, and allow those emotions to come forward and allow them, allow your body to feel completely. Let's go ahead and take three more cleansing breaths here. So in through the nose, out through the nose or mouth. Softening the eyes, the forehead, and the entire face. And noticing that when we inhale, that support on our spine and our back really feels and opens up our heart. You can feel your heart from the back as well. And let's go ahead and roll off our bolster, our mat and come into just resting your head on maybe on your right arm, the inside of your right arm, planting your left hand on the floor and then allowing that to help you come up. So if you used your yoga mat as your bolster, go ahead and lengthen that out. And once you've gotten it lengthened back out, we're gonna go ahead and meet in all fours. So as we come to all fours, we want to make sure our hips are above our knees and then our wrists. Instead of bringing them directly underneath our um, shoulder, we're going to put them just a little bit wider than our shoulder. So as we come and maybe um, put some of our fingers on top of our mat and the other off the mat, we're going to move into some cat and cow. So as you exhale, rolling into a cat pose, rounding out your spine, tucking the tailbone in. As you inhale, allowing that belly to sag and lift your gaze straight ahead or to the degree that feels good to tilt the chin. When you need to replenish, let's go ahead or to release, exhale, fold once more. And then when you need to fill that oxygen back up, inhale, tilting the chin to your own degree up to the sky and just continue to move there. Now the reason we have our um, hands slightly wider is we're gonna create circles to just warm up our wrists. So what I like to do is just moving in a circle to the side, and as I come to that cow pose, coming to the front, to the other side, and then as I make my way to the back, more of that cat rounding everything out. So really it's up to you, whatever feels organically right to your body right now. And noticing the lightness in the hands as we come and bring our hips back. And then the more heaviness or weight into the fingertips as we come forward. Let's go ahead and switch that around. Really bringing awareness to the sensations flowing throughout the body. What are the wrists telling you and shoulders, lower back and spine. One more circle. Good job. And then from here, let's go ahead and sit on those heels, lengthen our fingers forward and our arms, and then rest the forehead on the mat. Coming into our child's pose. So this is a pose that you can come to at any time to just bring your awareness back to that breath if it's starting to just um, escape you a little bit. So from here, we're gonna come up into our hands into a sort of an all fours position, except our chest is slightly forward. So coming up, and then we're gonna tuck our tailbones under, come up to our first down dog. And as we come here, we're gonna pedal the feet, dropping one heel and lifting the other, and then switching sides. And you can even just maybe bend and lengthen one knee at a time. You can even do like a little Tahiti movement, shaking the hips back and forth, and drop that chest down towards your toes. And I'll just walk around here. So keep moving there, and then we're gonna bring awareness to our thumb and our first finger. And you're gonna try to squeeze the center of those together, squeezing them out. And then spread the rest of the fingers out wide and bring awareness to the tips of those fingers, dropping them into the cushiony mat. Good job. Then from here, 
Let's go ahead and walk our hands towards the front of our mat, towards our hands. Taking a hold of your ankles or your shins, lift your gaze up just halfway, shooting the hips back, and then exhaling forward. Good job, keep breathing here. Finding the crown of the head, pointing that directly to the floor. If you need to soften the knees to get here, totally fine. Tuck the chin, good job. As we inhale, let's go ahead and keep that soft bend into our knees, rising up, reaching the arms overhead to standard extended mountains. And from here, we're gonna exhale, bring our shoulders back, squeezing around our spine to cactus arms, gathering that energy into our heart. And inhale, lift it back up. Exhale, opening up that heart. And back to our center. Inhale, lift. Exhale, open up cactus arms. And then gathering that energy into our heart. Let's do this two more times reaching high and then opening up that heart. It's a bit, a little bit of a standing back bend, reaching strong and open. And bringing palms together at heart center. So from here, just bringing awareness again, how did that spine feel, the chest feel, and that supported heart opener? So we wanna feel our chest open as if that bolster was still behind you. We're gonna take our right arm to back and try to bring those fingers to the side, to the other side, taking your left hand and just taking a hold of the wrist or slightly above the wrist, dropping the right shoulder, and then we're just gonna bend our right ear towards it. Noticing this stretch, opening up the heart, and opening up the right shoulder and bringing our head back to the center now just dipping our chin down towards your left chest so slightly at a diagonal continue to drop your right shoulder down and away and inhaling release lift our arms back up to the sky Exhaling cactus arms, and then draw that energy into the heart. We'll move to the other side, reaching around with our left arm, bringing those fingers to the right side, taking your right hand, and either taking a hold of the wrist or slightly higher, and then drop that left shoulder, and then exhaling, allowing your left ear to just tip over towards that side. Nice full breaths. Keeping that left shoulder down, we're gonna go ahead and bring our head to the center and then bring our chin towards the right shoulder and dip it down. Finding that beautiful stretch along the side of the neck as well as that openness in the chest and in the left shoulder. And coming back towards the center, then inhaling, reach up to our extended mountain, exhaling, swan diving to the ground, forward fold, tuck that chin deeply, lift your gaze halfway, and exhale, we're gonna plant both feet to the back. Good job, pausing here in our um, plank pose. So if this is a little bit, uh, uncomfortable, you can always come down to the knees. So from here, we're gonna just bend our elbows halfway, shoot those elbows to the back and inhale, come back up. And then this time we're gonna drop to our knees, reach our chest forward and bring the chest down. And then rolling our shoulders up, bringing our chest up. Just noticing how open your lower back is and your hip. We're gonna exhale, take a peek at our right foot, and then back to center. We should feel energy out our feet. Look to the other side, slightly dipping our left or right hip down. Back to center, 
to all fours just briefly. Tuck the toes, inhaling to down dog. Tucking the chin, we're gonna lift up our lower belly and knit those ribs together. Beautiful. Now bring awareness to the spacing between your hands and your feet. Does this feel comfortable? Does it feel as if it's imbalanced and there's too much weight in the shoulders or the wrist? Good job. And then we're gonna take our right leg up towards the sky and put a band into that knee. So we're gonna peek underneath our right arm and breathe into this space, pressing the floor away, lightening the load on our hands and our wrists. And then we're gonna square our hips back off to the mat, lengthening the legs, squaring those hips, Bring that right foot next to our right hand. We're going to open up our heart to the center, extend it forward, dropping our back knee. Walk our hands up our leg. Inhaling towards the sky. Now bring your gaze either up towards the ceiling or possibly where the ceiling and the wall meet. Let's bring awareness to our right leg, engaging our thigh, lifting our hips slightly higher, bringing awareness to the chest, leading with the heart, as if I had my hand at the small of your back, and then walking it up to the center right behind your um, upper, upper ribs. Job. Exhale, planting our hands back to the floor. We're going to reach our right arm towards the ceiling. You can inhale, lift your back knee up if you would like. That's a little bit more strengthening. So that's an option. We're going to exhale, bring our right hand to our um, foot. And inhale, bring it back up. And noticing as we exhale, we bring breath to the back of our chest. And then inhale, bring it up, bring breath to the front of our chest. So noticing this little bit of difference. Let's do two more of this flow. And last one, and we'll meet with our right arm extended towards the sky. And then exhale, frame that foot, drop our back knee and walk our hands forward or towards our, front, our right knee once more. From here, we're gonna go ahead and drop our right hand to the floor or just rest your elbow slightly above. Inhale, left arm overhead, and bring your gaze either to the ceiling or to the palm. And we're gonna take our pinky, point it down. So our shoulder is op it's coming inward so we're bringing breath to the back of our heart. And keep breathing. And as you continue to stay here, notice if anything opens up, you can drop your hand and you can lengthen and extend a little bit more. And then exhale, we're gonna go ahead and drop both hands, framing that foot again, extend the leg to the back. And we're gonna lower our chest to the floor Inhale, come back up. And then dropping to our knee, keeping that chest open, drop the chest right between our thumbs, thread it through, forward, and come up to our cobra pose. So we're allowing the legs to sit on the mat, lengthening in our shoulders. Instead of sitting down, we're gonna inhale, lift up. Beautiful. Exhaling, tucking the toes, to our down dog. And we'll pause here, listening to the breath, three, for about three counts. Good job, everyone. See if anyone here, I can see you guys on camera doing this. Hopefully you all are joining us out there. Beautiful. And we're gonna extend the left leg towards the sky. And then putting a bend in the knee, placing that bend over the other leg. 
Beautiful, peeking underneath your left arm, maybe to the sky or just to the side. Remember the breath, breathe it all in, love it all out. Let's square the hips, lengthening the knee once more, the leg, squaring everything off and then bring that left foot next to the left hand. And then we're gonna open up our chest to the front of the room. So leading with the heart, we're gonna drop our back knee and then walk our hand up our left leg. Inhaling arms towards the ceiling and pressing your right or your left foot, engaging all the corners of that foot into the floor and almost feeling um, the arch of the foot lifting. Engaging the thigh, so lengthening one vertebrae at a time, reaching for the sky. Exhale, planting our hands so they frame that foot. You can lift up your back knee and then lift up your left arm towards the ceiling. Feeling that beautiful rotation as the shoulder comes up. Exhale, drop the hand back towards our, right, our left foot. Inhale, rotating it back up to the sky. So we're moving into this flow maybe four or five more times. And it's an option, you can always drop your right knee. Good job. Noticing if there's more space, if things are opening up, chipping away, and breaking up, and you can rotate a little bit more. Let's go ahead and meet with our left arm extended to the sky. Take a breath and then letting it frame that left foot again, dropping our right knee, walk our hands up. So you can drop that left hand to the floor or just rest your knee slightly above or your elbow slightly above the knee. Right arm extends to the sky and then we're leaning into our left side. Bringing the gaze to the sky or to the palm. And then that pinky points to the ground. So it rounds out the shoulder, bring awareness to bring, bringing that breath to the back. And as we bring that, back, that breath to the back, it will stimulate the heart. Inhale, one inch higher or deeper, and then release, hands to the ground. We're gonna step that right or right, left foot back Coming to our vinyasa flow, exhaling to the floor. Inhale back to our plank. Coming to the knees if you're not there already. And down we go. Thread that chest forward, up to the sky, to our down dog. Finding lightness in those feet and in the wrist. The tailbone is high. Keep breathing, looking at the belly button. Looks good, keeping the fingers wide apart and then softly squeezing thumb and first finger around your mat. Nice. Putting a soft bend into the knees, we're gonna make our way to our hands. So either hopping to the hands or walking our feet towards them. We're gonna extend just halfway to that tabletop. Forward fold, sinking that chest back down towards the legs. Inhaling, coming up, up to our extended mountain, reaching the arms high. Exhaling, palms together, thumbs at heart center. And we're gonna take a seat here to our chair pose. So bring weight into the hips. And we're gonna scoop our lower belly. Remember our pelvic floor that connected our feet, our legs to the earth. So we're sinking low. We're gonna reach our arms either to a diagonal or possibly bend those elbows or rest the hands on the hips. Good job. Exhale, forward fold. Tuck that chin. Lift your gaze just halfway 
and then release the hands to the mat, extend the legs to the back. Coming onto the knees or staying at high plank, we're gonna lower on down. Inhale back to plank and dropping our knee and then chest to the ground. Threading that chest forward, then up. You can choose to lengthen those legs coming up to up dog, then to down dog. This time the right leg extends to the sky, but it stays there. So you can almost see your toes. Then plant that foot next to your right hand. Open up the heart to the front. Feel your left toes rooted into the floor. And then we're going to raise up our arms, lifting them to the sky, to our crescent pose. Lengthening your back leg. We're going to take our hands to the back, interlace fingers. Now this is going to be tricky with my microphone. <laughs> so interlace your fingers. Find the right thumb over the left. You can also take reverse prayer or just grab opposite elbows. Lifting up that chest, dropping the shoulders down and away from the ears, tilting the chin slightly up. Good job. Two breaths here. We're gonna bring our chest so it's just coming into a diagonal. Begin to lift up your left leg into our warrior three. That's where we lengthen our left leg, allow it to come up, and our body is parallel to the floor. Now you can tap your left toe, toes to the floor if you want, and your arms, your arms in the back can rise or they can rest on your spine. One more breath here. And then we're gonna reverse, bring the weight back to the left toe, lengthen the chest up, reach the arms back to the sky, and then frame the foot with the hands, dropping our back knee, reach your right arm forward, and then reach it to the back of the room. Opening up that right shoulder, exposing the chest, to the side, and then that right knee, just allow it to open up to its own degree. And then coming back to the front, lowering the hand down, extend the leg to the back, high plank, or on the knees, lower down, all the way, inhaling, cobra, or up dog, with our legs off the mat, to down dog, Now, if you want to take child's pose here, you can. We'll be here for about four or five breaths. Once more, our body is really efficient and it wants to take the easy way out. So find a place where you're still engaging your shoulders and your hips. Your legs are rolling in. Good job. One more full breath in. And as we exhale, we're going to hop or walk our, hand, our feet to our hands. Extending our gaze just halfway to that tabletop. Exhale, forward fold. And inhaling to our chair pose again, Utkatasana. And all the way up to standing mountain. Palms together at heart center. Beautiful, let's go ahead and brush our fingertips to the mat, coming back up to our chair. Noticing once more, do you need to adjust those arms depending on how the shoulders are feeling? Lifting those toes lightly, sending the weight into the hips and into the heels, we're gonna interlace our fingers to the back. This time, find the left on top of the right. Really tricky with my microphone. <laughs> Opening up the heart. We're gonna forward fold. Oh baby. Yes. 
tuck the chin, lift those arms high above the head to your own degree again. And then exhale, release the hands back to the floor. Inhale, lift the gaze halfway. And exhaling to your plank pose. So either walking your feet back, staying on the toes or coming onto the knees. Exhale, just halfway. And then inhale back up, dropping the knees, threading that chest forward, and then down to the floor. Cobra or up dog, beautiful. Exhaling down dog. Did you take the big whiff of that peppermint? Give you a little bit more energy as we come to our last side, lifting up the left leg, keeping the hips square this time. So possibly you see those toes dangling. So this is a bit more, a little bit more strengthening, engages that entire leg. And then let's go ahead, giant step, placing that left hand next to you, or left foot next to your left hand. Open up the heart first, bringing your gaze forward. Feel the right toes and the ball of the foot rooted into the floor. Inhaling, raising those arms up, coming to our crescent pose. Good job, sinking into that lunge, but we're gonna engage our thigh, lifting up the knee, which lifts up our hip, which will lengthen the spine. Dip back a little bit more if there's space. We'll just walk around, lightly pressing at the higher back to expose that heart. Good job. Keep breathing, keep reaching, keep opening. Shoulders soft and down. Beautiful. Interlacing fingers behind. Once more, grabbing opposite elbows or reverse prayer or interlace fingers. This time, the left thumb is over the right, exposing the heart, lighten the right foot, and come to your diagonal. And then slowly bring the weight up to our right foot, lightening our, the load on the right, finding ourselves in our warrior three. Breathe. Remember, you can always keep that right toe or toes tapped to the ground. Two more breaths. Gently dropping your right foot back down. Inhaling arms to the sky. And then framing the foot. Extend the legs to the back. Lower just halfway, back up, dropping our knees, bringing that chest down, threading it forward, coming to up dog or cobra, to our down dog or child's pose. Beautiful. We're gonna get ready to bring this down to the floor. So get what you need from this last down dog. Breathe it all in. Love it out. Beautiful. If it's in your practice to jump through those arms to our seated pose, you can do that. Otherwise, let's come to all fours. Cross at the ankles and take a seat behind. So we're gonna remove that extra flesh, planting those sit bones down towards the floor. Inhale our arms to the sky again, and open up the chest to our cactus arms. Tuck the chin slightly as we draw our hands down, and then bring them to our heart center. Inhale, lift them up once more. Cactus arms, drawing that down towards our hips, tucking the chin, and then palms together to our heart. Interlace fingers, lift the arms up. Good job. And exhale, we're gonna take those hands, just reverse them and possibly planting them on the back of our feet. And if you want, you can bend those knees, take the hands there, and then relax your chin down towards the chest. So 
we should feel our belly hitting the top of our thigh first and our chest continues to reach forward. Good job. Inhale, lift the gaze and exhale. As we come up, just squeeze those legs. Bringing your palms up so they're about um, our, they're just shoulder height. And then we're gonna take those hands about a foot behind our hips. Open up the chest again, lift the heart. So this is option one. You can stay here and really open up the chest by opening up the shoulders around the spine and using your triceps that they're pointed to the back. You can also press your big toes together and then inhale, lift up the hips and tilt your gaze up. You can also bend the knees, squeeze the glutes and come to that tabletop position. Opening up the chest. Make sure you're breathing once more as if my hand was at your upper back, pressing lightly, gently, and then releasing back down. Hug everything in, curling into a tight ball. Good job. We're gonna go ahead and just drop our right knee down to the floor so our left, our right foot is next to our left glute. And then our right foot, our left foot goes on the outside of our right knee. We're gonna take a little twist here. So using your left hand as an anchor to the back, you're gonna take your elbow on the outside of the knee or just hug that bent knee close to the chest. Scoop that lower belly in, deepen your twist as you bring your gaze to the back. Soften the face, smooth out the forehead. As you inhale, lengthen the chest and the spine a bit more. Exhale, deepen your twist. Good job. And inhale, tilt your chin up. And then we're gonna drop it down towards the chest Make a circle as we bring it towards the front of the room, tilting the chin to the diagonal and exhale, release. Counter stretch to the opposite side, just opening up the heart briefly. And then we're gonna take a little flash dance pose. If you don't know what flash dance is, that's okay. <laughs> we're gonna reach our legs up and then just the opposite. So our left knee is down, our right foot is on the outside and that left foot is next to your bum, and your knee is up high. Using your right hand as an anchor, anchor behind your hip. Using your left elbow on the outside of your right knee, knee or just hug it. Inhale, sitting up a little bit taller as you scoop that belly in to create more space. Lengthening. Sinking a little bit lower into the hip. Jut the chin up slightly to that diagonal and then down towards the floor as it works its way around to the front diagonal. Exhale, a little bit of a counter stretch over to the other side, sitting up nice and tall. And releasing. Once more, we're gonna curl up into that tight ball. And then we're gonna rock back and forth and bringing our spine to our mat. So if it doesn't work for you to rock and roll on that spine, just go ahead and bring your spine down to the ground. You can hold on to the back of your right thigh and gently bring your spine down to the floor. And then from here, let's go ahead and bring our legs up towards the sky. Putting a bend into the knees and then placing those knees just slightly wider than the body. Flexing the feet, taking a hold of the bottoms of the feet. Coming into our happy baby pose, we're just gonna rock from side to side as we draw those knees closer along the side of the body. If you want, you can raise up your chest. Your shoulders look between the legs. And then begin 
begin to bring that movement to a stillness, bringing the head back down. And we're going to just rest our knees above our hips, bring the knees together, and then taking your right knee over your left, taking your left hand and bringing those knees over to the left side. Extending the right arm to the side, and then we're going to follow that with our gaze, tilting your head over to the right side, gently close the eyes. And feel the entire weight of your body. And with it, any last bit of weight that you don't need or weight that feels too heavy. Allowing that to be deeply supported by the earth. And inhaling, coming back to center. Just keeping those knees above our hips, this time bringing the left knee over the right, taking everything to the right side, extending the left arm to the floor. It can be cactus arms or extended, and then bringing the gaze over to the left side. With each exhale out, allowing any last bit of walls or anything that is hard to break away to find its softness revealed, its vulnerability, its suppleness. And we're going to come back into the center. Keeping the knees up, we're going to bring the soles of the feet together, the knees out to a diamond shape, reaching the arms by our ears. And then exhaling, bringing them to cactus arms. Imagining once more that, that support, that bolster underneath the spine. So we draw our chest up, feeling our shoulder blades deeply resting on the mat. And gently rocking the head from side to side until it finds its most natural place to rest. One final big inhale through the nose. And let's exhale that out with an audible sigh out the mouth. One more time in through the nose. And out through the mouth. You're welcome to stay here or go ahead and move to your deeper Shavasana pose, lengthening the legs, possibly allowing the arms to come down alongside the body. Allow there to be enough space between your legs so that the ankles can fall away. And as we come to our most important pose of the night, I invite you to let go of that breath and any sensation body and to find complete emptiness, a complete release, a blank slate, as if you just poured out every last bit of breath and pain and sensation poured it out.
feeling the expansion of the body with the breath of life and feeling that release as you exhale. And with this breath, allowing little movements to return in the toes and fingertips, maybe stretching the arms above or beside by the ears, whatever feels organically right to wake yourself back up. And finally, I have some passion inspiring blend to share with all of you. And this also imbues energy and warmth into the heart, connects us back into our passions uh, with a renewed energy into our life. So if you would like some of this oil, keep your palms open. If you'd like to skip me, just or skip the oil, just place your hands over the belly. And just rubbing the palms together, creating a tent over the face, breathing that aroma in with it, the warming oils from cinnamon and clove make its way to warming the heart. Also, the highest vibration oil of rose and jasmine to fill the heart chakra, allowing there to be a lightness, an openness, and a softness. And then if you'd like, just taking that, rubbing the palms together again vigorously, and then resting the hands over the heart center. And we're just gonna end here, and it's up to you whenever you feel ready to come back up into a seated pose. And possibly here with our palms connecting us to the heart energy, bringing awareness to someone that is very meaningful to your heart, or possibly sending that love energy out to someone special and keeping that person close as you breathe in and breathe out that love energy. And continuing to stay there or coming up to seated if you would like. We're just gonna rest our hands on the knees if you're at seated pose. Close the eyes and bring awareness again to those mindful breaths in through the nose and out through the nose or mouth. Now let's go ahead and plant our palms together and rest our thumbs right against the heart and then taking the energy of the heart, pressing that against the thumbs. A powerful pose, a powerful energy symbolizing this love, this light that we have within, to sharing that with all those around us and in this world. And I honor the light and the love that is in each of you. Namaste. So I have a little treat for everyone that's here. I made some chai latte. Um, I love having a yoga class and then giving everyone a warm tea afterwards. And so would you mind just hitting that just to warm it up one more time? And um, the recipe is on my Facebook page or my Instagram page. Um, so you can go to Essentials for Yoga um, on Facebook or Adabelle B. Carson on Instagram and it has a 
recipe there. Super simple. Um, you can make it your own and add whatever sweetener that you like. And we're going to add some um, four oils, four oils tonight. So you don't want to add that in when you're heating it up. Just add it in after it's heated. So we'll do that, and you guys can take a break if you want, and then. As we're drinking our tea, we're going to dive in just a little bit into how you can make a yoga and essential oils workshop or a class and make it your own. drop just one clove essential oil here and again these are doTERRA brands so I don't know if I would trust any other brand to take internally um, then this is ginger one drop and you would want to just let it cool a little bit um, before you put the oils and then one drop of cardamom so we're using oils here that are great for the digestion as well as the respiratory system and then we have cinnamon, so very warming. It's a strong antiseptic, so, but um, I love all these oils because not only do they warm the belly, but we know as they warm the belly, it warms our heart. And you know what, if you are um, heard that saying, now I'm gonna forget it, but um, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach, right? Something like that. <laughs> So um, I'm just going to invite all of you guys here, come and taste, tell, tell everybody what you think of this. Super easy to make. This is with coconut, uh, coconut milk, unsweetened coconut milk. Oh, thank you. And I think I got enough cups here. All right. So here you go. Let's get more faces on camera. <laughs> come on, milk. Get some here. <laughs> so I love I love the energy of having a, a community class. Um, oftentimes we'll go to class, show up at class, and and just feeling that yoga kula yoga community um, brings a lot of energy and warmth into our own heart. And so, what do you guys think? It's so cozy. Yeah. Very cozy. Yeah. This is um, whenever I serve this to my yoga classes. They can't get enough of it, which is good, so then I don't have to bring any extra home. So feel free to, I have another cup you want to send, want to give to her. It's really good. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So I wish I could give you all a cup out there. Um, it's delicious online so try this recipe out and you can I put it in a little jar and just will keep it in my fridge it will keep for at least a week maybe more I don't know <laughs> it's usually gone by then and then just warm it up as needed so um, as we sip our tea we'll go ahead and open this up to um, any questions that anyone has um, just feel free online we have someone there moderating the um, the Zoom call and can, add, can see if there's questions. So if you have any questions come up, please um, share them with all of us. And I'm just gonna give you guys, I don't know which lid goes on what, so we'll just wait. Um, just some of my thoughts about uh, teaching yoga with essential oils. So just a little bit of a background. Um, ever since I started teaching yoga, I've always used essential oils. 
Um, and that was, that was before doTERRA's time, that before the company was created. And thankfully I live here in Utah where there's, there was a very large um, essential oil company close by and, and their employees would come to my classes and give me bagfuls of free oil. So I love that. Um, but in time I had to go search out for other oils because of some situations that came up and, and some of those oils weren't working. And so um, I've always found that for myself, and always deepen my practice, either to help me come closer to stillness or um, to feel more connected to, to my body or connected to the earth. Usually I'm very much up here. You could tell as I teach, even though I've been teaching a long time, my right and my left, I always get confused, always. And so, um, so again, that's because more of my vata energy um, so it helps me feel really grounded, the essential oils. And I feel like when we give that extra care to our students or for yourself when you're in class, it just opens up a sense, your um, sense and also the sense that you don't have to learn. We don't have to learn how to use it. it we just breathe that aroma and then our body knows what to do with it. It goes straight to our brain and allows those um, chemicals to be released. And so I love that because a lot of times, especially if you're a little bit more heady, or for those that come to class with a lot of anxiety, um, or even a lot of emotions, you know, we know our emotions are directly linked to what we're thinking. And also, not only what we're thinking, but how we view the world. And so how we view the world, how we view ourselves, that's gonna totally affect what we're feeling and so if we can bypass all of that and go straight to the brain that says, let go of all of it, find release, find rest, um, then that's, that's the whole process, that's the whole point why we come in and do yoga, to tap into that deeply restful state and let go of the things that um, keep us, keep us um, unrested and keep us from feeling deep release um, and peace in our life. So some of the other ways that I've done, um, let me go ahead and get some of my materials up there. is a great one to use. Um, I found that I teach I teach every day of the weekday um, a yoga class and so I kind of like to vary the oils that I use in class and especially the type of energy that you might be feeling that day. Really use your intuition to, um, to use the oil that you feel drawn to for that day. Um, but sometimes it's like, okay, there's so many oils, which ones do we choose from? So I love that we have a yoga collection, and this is, this is a great one to use, and I've often um, been asked, well, how do you use that? All you have to do is look at the name. <laughs> the name will tell you how to use it. So arise, when you guys hear the word arise, what does that embody, what does that invoke in you? I'm gonna put you guys on, on the spot here. <laughs> and the, so what does that word arise? Does that embody for you or maybe conjure up? Learning. Learning. Openness. Learning and openness. Okay. And we have some here. We have a gal here that's a yoga teacher. She does retreats. Um, how long have you been teaching? Long time? No. no. Oh, recently. Less than a year. About, about seven months. Oh, okay. Seven months. Yeah. Awesome. And then are you a teacher as well? I'm not. No. Oh, okay. I just am a student. You're a student practitioner. You look really familiar. Maybe I've seen you around. <laughs> I just like yoga. <laughs> yeah, so I love that. So Arise, she, um, tell me your name. Samantha. Samantha. 
So all those adjectives that she mentioned, so learning, where would you put the oil if it was one that you wanted to learn something or be open to learning? Where would you put it? Exactly, right up here along the head area. Um, what else did you say? What was the openness. other? Openness. Openness, okay, so openness, where would you put that? Where would you think to open that? I, I think of like in, in my, like in smelling it, to in, like in, enlighten and open my senses to mm -hmm. receive coming in awesome so when she was saying that open her senses she was actually rubbing right where her sinuses are and so this would be a great area breathe it in and rub it into your sinuses you know open to open the heart um, so great great ideas there so the other one the other there's two more um, the second one is called anchor so what does that is it Haley I'm Abby Abby Haley's Haley's behind, okay, so Abby, when you think of anchor, okay, maybe some yoga poses, just from tonight, do you do yoga normally? You can probably tell not normally, I'm not very flexible. <laughs> no, but you did great, was this your first class ever? One of them? Yeah. yeah. Oh, your <laughs> first class, great. So when you think of anchor, what are some of the movements that we did to make you feel anchored? First thing I thought of was feet, which I know mm. isn't a position. <laughs> no, it's great. But yes, anchoring right in your feet. And I yeah. guess uh, the part where we were just on our hips stretching, like anchoring our bodies to the floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. So bringing our weight down into the floor with our hips. So this would be a great place, again, to just put in those places of the body. We started with balance on the bottoms of our feet, but we could use anchor. That would be beautiful to use. And also, I would say during Shavasana, right, when we're lying down and we're totally anchored, releasing, this would be a beautiful oil to help them transition into uh, vinyasa pose. Okay, um, then the last one is called a line. So tell me again your name, Heather? Shannon. Shannon. Okay, Shannon, a line. What does that conjure up for you? Mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. but kind of bringing everything together it's centering and it's yeah that's beautiful you probably you read the you read the <laughs> cheat notes didn't you <laughs> so on the doTERRA page it will list poses that go with the yoga collection and a line actually is balancing you're balancing poses because you have to bring alignment to the spine to find that balance within your body um, and it works really well also for inversions or for arm balances because honestly a lot of that is just bringing awareness to the center the, the center of your body and where the um, center of weight is in your body. Not so much, um, you know, like, oh, I don't know, there's a lot going on, but that will help bring focus to where, oh, this is where maybe if I just inhale a little bit straighter or possibly loosen this area a little bit more will bring that easiness of balancing. So, great. All right, so the other one, oh, I didn't bring in all that, um, the emotion the emotion oils. I love um, the essential uh, emotional aromatherapy set. So there's six oils there. Um, I have in the diffuser tonight, Cheer. So one thing um, that I have found in the use of essential oils is that if it's a warmer class, People tend to feel more nauseous if they're like a really heavy scent, like sandalwood or vetiver or things like that. Even though those are really wonderful for meditation and for shavasana, if it's a warmer class, I, I tend to think it's a little bit too heavy. So I don't like to put those in the diffuser. Something more neutral, so like citruses and peppermint, um, even sometimes lavender for me. I teach um, hot yoga twice a week and I do hot yoga every day, almost every day, and oftentimes if I smell, even getting into my car, I smell lavender, I get a little bit ugh, like that. So I think it's because those are all naturally warm oils, and when we're especially warm, it can be, you know, maybe pull, it, pull us out of balance um, in the wrong way. So, but the, the console blend in the um, essential aromatherapy set is a hit. My class loves it. And I honestly think that's what yoga smells like, is consult. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, console is beautiful. Um, but peace and forgive, um, all great. To forgive, I think, it would be great in a diffuser. So usually I do forgive and cheer in the diffuser, and then the other ones I'll use topically. All right, um, do we have any questions coming up at all? Quiet, quiet on there. <laughs> okay, so um, this book, Emotions and Essential Oils, they have it here at Oil Life. Um, and I love this book because it will take all the oils from doTERRA, including the blends, and give us their emotional benefit. So some of the things like uh, peppermint, it's the oil of a buoyant heart. It will tell you the beautiful qualities of what a buoyant heart means. And also, um, we'll, we'll talk about some of the things that it will dispel. So um, this one, I think for the buoyant heart, it will dispel um, the feeling stuck and feeling like you're just grinding through life and there's not that freshness. It also will, it says um, something to the effect of, you know, sometimes we find a stillness in our life or where we can just settle in, we're in that comfort zone and we want to stay there for a long time. Peppermint kind of helps us come out of that because um, sometimes energetically we just stay there and before we know it, it's been 10 years <laughs> and we're like, oh, boy, I didn't do anything scary for those 10 years and also that might mean a stagnation in our, our progression. So um, peppermint helps combat that. So this is a great tool to have. Um, so I also go and do hot Pilates just because Utah is so cold this time of year and it's a room full of women, it's usually packed. It's so smelly, you guys, it's so stinky. <laughs> and if you go to, to a hot yoga or even wherever, um, I also do retreats and we'll go to Thailand and mostly in Asia and it's very humid and the, the mats start just reeking. And um, I haven't found anything better to clean naturally than just water. And then there's uh, four oils that I put in here. So this is another way that you can use essential oils in your yoga practice, which brings a beautiful energy because you don't have that alcohol smell, um, that, I don't know, that uh, antiseptic smell. And all the oils I use here on guard, which we know one drop in a liter of water will, you know, kill all the bacteria that's in the on your mat um, it has lemon so it's a um, helps cleanse any kind of grease or scuff marks um, dirt things like that has purify which purify is again has tea tree oil and then three different um, uh, citruses and also citronella and then um, peppermint did I list them all on guard um, lemon, peppermint, oh, and purify, that's it. So the peppermint I love because, again, it just gives us this very clean smell, um, but it also, it kind of, I don't know, it just settles into um, the fibers of our mat and kind of goes deep and cleanses all of that debris and, and yuckiness that can kind of get in there. And so if you wanted to uh, wash your mats a little bit more thoroughly, just take a bathtub or maybe just like, um, a big you know, container of sort and just put enough water to cover your mat and then drop these oils in the water, kind of squish it around and then just let it sit there. You might want to take a, a cloth or a, a sponge and, and wipe it down a little bit and then just hang it to dry. So that's, I've had this mat for the entire time that I've been doing yoga, so about 13 years. <laughs> And so, um, and it doesn't smell. You guys can't smell it, okay? <laughs> it doesn't smell bad. So I will, I will normally wipe it down with this in each class. And so if you have a studio um, and want to go all natural, um, and this is a great way to do it. All right, so um, these are, if you were gonna do like a yoga workshop, um, with oils, or possibly if you were going to do a retreat and said, okay, in the retreat, we're going to have each day kind of focused on something. These are um, press cards that I made that uh, when I go and do retreats abroad, um, we'll focus on maybe one day, it's just, we call it roll and restore. So it's a yoga sequence, but then you're using a foam roller or one of those balls. So you're getting your fascia work in. And then this just lists like four 
of the different um, fascial lines, the more uh, prominent ones, and then some poses, oils, uh, pranayama to do with that, and, um, and then where to place those oils. So you could create little cards like this. And like, there's so much that you can do, right? It could be one for sleep, um, that entire, like yoga nidra, a yoga nidra class. The other one I have is an Ayurveda class. So we kind of do a test, find out what your doshas are, and then essential oils that will support that dosha. So this is really easy here. They can, there's a simple recipe that they can make a little um, essential oil spray that they can use meditation or pranayama again or before practice to help balance out that dosha. And then finally, my other one that I really love and kind of started with is the chakra balancing. So this is just goes with what oils will balance out those chakras. So we started with that breathe oil, that's for the heart chakra. Um, it balances that out. So, and I use the protocol that um, Laura Jacobs um, shares from the very beginning of time <laughs> until now. And I found of all the people that I've ever balanced their chakras, this energetically will work like that. So I love that. And this, this would be like three, four hour workshop that you could do um, and just teach them how to use the oils and where to place them. So lots of great things. Um, this is, these are, let's see, these are my last copies of Essentials for Yoga book. Um, these were available for quite a long while and I've been updating them for the last two, <laughs> two years, kind of slow, but um, we're putting all original artwork in there and then we're getting them compliant. So um, everything's almost done. Just my daughter is doing the watercolors but this is a great one. Um, people would just buy in packs and then instead of doing these simple ones or these one page ones, everything is in here. So it talks about chakra balancing, dosha balancing. Um, it even has recipes for henna. So watch for that. Um, if you want to know when that comes out, just hop back to Oil Life and it will show it. Yes. So that, she just asked, um, how do you know if your chakras are out of balance? So it's, you can use pendulums, you can ask yourself and do muscle testing. So there's lots of different ways you can, there's also online tests that you can do, like multiple choice questions to see which chakra is out of balance. If you're, um, if you're uh, meditation, if that's very normal in your, um, self-care routine or possibly you know your spiritual routine you can meditate and ask which chakra should I work on so there's seven and so honestly sometimes you can just go with like looking in the mirror and looking at your body and also combining that with how you're feeling that will tell you which chakra is out of balance so like when I look at the body, my body right now, oh, I see that acne. <laughs> acne is a little bit prominent. And, um, and then maybe I'll look at, oh, I'm not getting enough sleep. So I know that possibly the chakra that's not balanced for me is my third eye. Like this is really busy right now. And if I'm showing acne here, that maybe there's some, um, some issues going up here in my higher chakras. And so to bring balance to that, I need to bring myself closer to the earth. So I'm gonna put you on the spot. Is that okay? Yeah. So how are you feeling like right now? Just do a gentle scan. Well, the first thing that came to mind when you said that was, um, I think the yellow one is your stomach. Mm -hmm. um, I ate not so well in my Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> You had two minutes ice cream, the essential oil ice cream downstairs. Oh, now I have wings in the Super Bowl. I don't, oh. even, I don't even really care who's playing. I'm just like wings and beers. Just the, the, the beer. <laughs> yeah, so that's great. So she said she's feeling a little bit some um, abdominal issues because of partying for uh, Super Bowl Sunday. So you would grab digest then. That's her third chakra, our solar plexus. And so you could just place that over the belly, but then also maybe do some yoga poses that would help with this. So cat cow helps with this, boat pose, anything where you have to use your core. Um, a lot of twists, a lot of twists are very detoxifying and will also cleanse any kind of that pent up energy in this area. So just thinking of it like a pipe 
So if there's blockage anywhere, sometimes it will stop everything below or everything above. And that, that flow of energy can't move in a peaceful, balanced way. So yeah, perfect, perfect example. So just tune into our body, what we're feeling and what we're seeing when we look in the mirror. Okay, um, any questions coming up? <laughs> Oh yes. How do you muscle test yourself? If I want to find out, because I'm thinking when she's asking about her chakra, I'm thinking mine's like all up here. Like yeah. I feel very, I'm going from one thing to another, and then there's like anxiety, and mm -hmm. I'm trying to kind of slow down. Mm -hmm. so how do I muscle test myself to know if that tr truly is? If yeah. So there's lots of ways, but the one that I use is I just create a ring with my finger, and I'll just put this down. Oh, it's so noisy. <laughs> okay, can you hear me if I do that? Am I coming through? It's okay? All right, I'll kind of yell. So I just create a circle like this, and then I'll take these fingers and put them inside. And then I'll ask myself a question, and if I break that ring easily, then I know it's a false statement. But if it sticks, then I know it's a true statement. So I'll say, okay, I know, uh, my second chakra is balanced. Mm -mm. And I know that's always a problem for me, my second chakra. So let's say um, my heart chakra is balanced. Nope, it isn't. <laughs> So, and you don't have to exert too much pressure, but you want to kind of resist it. You want to resist as you're, as you're opening up and your body will tell you. So an easy one just to test yourself is to say your name. My name is Annabelle. Oh, absolutely, it's sticky. So my name is Heather, no way, <laughs> right? So that's an easy one. Um, another easy one is you stand up and then you ask yourself questions and see where the momentum of your body takes you. Does, it, does the momentum take you forward or does, it, does the momentum take you back? So traditionally, for most people, if the momentum takes you forward, it's a true statement. But if it takes you back, it's a false statement. So those are two, two easy ways that I found works really well for me. Um, and you'll see, like, I love going to like doTERRA incentive trips or like any doTERRA gathering and you'll see tons of people muscle testing what should I have for lunch salad <laughs> or you know whatever it is and they'll muscle test so um, so start playing around with it and I think the more you use it the more comfortable you'll get to that yeah, yes and you can do it with somebody like you can just have your fingers and then ask the question and they can try to pull your fingers apart okay if you have someone available okay. yeah yeah, so, yeah yeah thank you yeah, and that's always fun. Um, an easy one to do is like you can grab, you know, those um, artificial sugars in the restaurant if you're with a friend and grab that. And um, then you say, this is good for me. And then you have your friend try to break that hand, finger and absolutely it's not good for you. So they'll just break it apart. So then you can kind of ask questions going from like that's your base. Yeah, push them apart, but try to resist by yeah. bringing them Easier together. Easier to push apart than yeah. If it's false. if it's uh -huh. if it's okay. false, then you break it very easily, okay. and if it's true, then it will stick. And is it just like your your subconscious mind that is and the energy within your body that is going to yeah. have the finger break? Yeah. Okay. And because our um, have you ever heard our body keeps score? <laughs> It's like our body can't lie. So whatever is true, our body will hold on to. So our minds might be false, our thinking might be false, our, our feelings might be false even. Um, and so sometimes we can't trust that, but our body will always know. And so um, that's kind of tapping into, okay, body, let me know right now, and I'm just gonna bypass my feelings and bypass my brain, my thoughts that are circling, and trust that, yeah. So. Okay, um, let me think, oh, okay, so I meant to share this. Um, this is a great way to, again, if it's a little bit warmer, um, class, having a water bottle with, I just have peppermint and wild orange, and I just went around the room and sprayed that, and just above, just sprayed a light mist, 
Um, could you guys feel that settling down on you? How did that feel? Refreshing. Because it got a little bit warm in here, didn't it? Did you guys feel like you got a warm practice in? Yeah. And this microphone could hear every <laughs> <laughs> that I was doing. So um, anyway, so yeah, this is a great one to just bring that energy back down and let your, again, just let them find that deep relaxation. And um, so if that serves, this is a great way, a great tool. And if you're doing a retreat, um, like Shannon, you know, she's gonna be doing these retreats. This would be a fun one, like a little bottle that you could give to everybody. And then you're not moving around the room, but they could spray it on themselves if they chose to do that. I've got the hot yoga studio I, I go to, um, they always bring out these, these uh, towels that have been in the freezer and they have the aromas, aroma or the essential oils um, steeped into them. So if you didn't have that, you could easily use this and get like, maybe paper towels, dampen the paper towels, and then pass those around in the class. And then, you know, they're one-time use, and, um, and then they could just throw them away when they're finished. So that would be an easier way to do, to do that. All right, um, we did start the class with some deep blue rub. So that's a great way. How did your back feel after the class that you put Pretty in? good. Yeah? I was glad the deep blue rub was there, because when we started, I I was like, oh, yeah. I'm not used to moving like this. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. So when you're warming, you're moving around, you can feel that warming up. And we know with deep blue rub, the more friction it receives, then it activates it more, and it goes deeper. So heat and friction will bring that deep blue rub and all its yummy goodness deeper into the tissues and into the muscles. And and I've had, um, and I'll share this because hopefully some of my class is watching and. Um, there was one time, I forget, who, oh, we did a roll and restore class, and um, one of my students, she had a Charlie horse, where was it? Was it in the bum? Yeah, it was like just down her bum and the back of her thigh. It was really interesting, but it was like um, contracting on her and giving her a lot of pain. And I didn't have any deep blue rub, but thankfully had Cypress, and I gave her Cypress, and instantly it went away instantly so you always want to have some kind of the the essential oils in your tool belt to help your students like maybe as they come out maybe they're feeling something not quite right and then you can give them an essential oil so it's good to know your oils for sure if you're going to be teaching and know their benefits um, and cypress is great because it's specifically for muscle spasms um, and for uh, connective tissue so it's perfect that that we have that. Um, so what what should you bring to a yoga class? All of this I can fit in my little tiny um, uh, yoga tote. So not too much, and you don't wanna, uh, at one time I did have my oils out and I would have my class members choose what oil they wanted. But then what I found is that it got too much because everyone would either, like some would pick a really musky oil and then someone else would pick maybe like a floral oil and and then another one an herb oil and then one like a tea tree like a cleaning oil and all of that became too much and too heavy so now I honestly will pick exactly what oils to use in the class and no more than four I would say and stick to stick to ones that are very light not too heavy if you are going to use a heavier one possibly start the class with that maybe with like a pranayama practice and start with sandalwood or vetiver or you know whatever else that is very grounding frankincense now frankincense is if you like if you add that with like a citrus it's beautiful it's not too strong sandalwood as well but again that's a little bit more thick um, and myrrh even though that's lighter that's really powerful i think for the aroma especially as you're breathing that in through a warmer class so um, maybe play around with it first at home See what, what feels good with you, and then try that out. Um, now, there's specific classes where possibly you don't want to use oils and ask first. Um, those could be like trauma-based classes, or um, yeah, just classes that you have to be really careful of those that are coming to the class. Because as powerful as aroma is to help heal emotionally, it can also be a powerful trigger in the wrong way. 
So we wanna make sure that we're always asking if essential oils are okay to use in the class. And allow them to come up to you, um, give them enough time to come to up to you privately if there's an issue with that. And if there's one person with an issue, then don't use it, obviously. Um, and maybe you could offer like others things like lemon, would lemon be okay? Or wild orange, you know, some of those lighter oils, the citruses, the single oils instead of the blends. Balance, on the other hand, is a perfect oil, the one we started with for all, usually even for a trauma-based class. It's very grounding and, and, um, it, and the, the smell of the forest generally has a very soothing effect for most people. All right, um, so oil life marketing people there. <laughs> what else would you feel I should touch on in this class? Thank you. Yeah. Is, is there anything else as we're coming to the end here or anyone else out there online that has any other questions or comments? How did you guys feel online if you did the practice with us? They're quite true. And it, <laughs> how many are there? Um, there were, I think, 15 at one point. Okay. Okay. I think a lot of people are going to see the video after that. See the video. All right. So hopefully um, if you do have more questions, as you're, if you're watching this after the live video, feel free to find me on Instagram or Facebook and um, ask away or comment away, and I'd love to hear from you. And um, so that's it, I think. We're ending early, but that's all right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Adabel. You're welcome. You were so wonderful. Everyone, we really enjoyed Adabel, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> uh, her Instagram again is Adabel B. Carson. That's A D A B E L L E B C A R S O N. Very I'm surprised good. I got right. <laughs> um, and then her uh, Facebook is Essentials for Yoga. That would be facebook.com slash essentials for yoga. Thank you all so much for joining us. We're so excited for you to come to our next event. We're having the Emotions and Oils class on February 19th from 6 to 8 Mountain Time again. So please come and join us. Thank you all for being a part of our audience here in Utah. And have a beautiful night, everyone.